What happens when everything goes wrong at the wrong time in your prep? And you're left to kind of pick up the pieces and work around your circumstances and invent a new way of going forward to try to salvage things and still be able to land the plane on show day. That's the situation that I am dealing with right now as I am just a little over one week out. So what I want to do is take you through my prep so far the good things and then where it all went south. And then we're gonna talk through in detail about what I'm doing from two weeks out until the start of peak week to try and right the ship and put myself in a good place. So we're gonna talk about that today. This is episode 259 of The Drop Set. Let's hit it. What's up, everybody? Darren Starr here. Yes, we are going to dig in on my prep, the uh, the mess that my prep has become and how we're going to salvage it. Thank you for joining me here today. You can check out everything that I do online if you're interested at both 5starphysique.com, that's for coaching and workout programs, and also 5stardigital.com for online courses such as Hypertrophy University, which is available for pre-order now and will be officially launching um, on June 1st, which is the day after this episode comes out. So this is episode 259. We're going to call this Getting Stage Ready Part 1. So Part 2 will follow next week. I'm going to try and push that one, uh, the recording of that episode, off a little bit so that it's going to be closer and closer towards show day so that we can talk more and more about what exactly peak week is going to look like. This is the pre-peak week um, discussion here. So I want to give you a little bit of backstory on what's been going on with this prep so far, kind of step you through everything that's gone right, everything that's gone wrong since the stuff that's gone right went right, and then where we're at right now, why I find myself in this current predicament and what I'm doing about it. So that being said, let's dive in, shall we? Um, yeah, peak week is next week. Um, this first part here, I would say typically is not necessary. Um, like what I'm going to talk about today for most people, if you have a fairly smooth prep, um, you probably don't need this. The, the idea is you just kind of coast from the start of prep. You get tighter and tighter and tighter up until show day or up, up, until, up until the start of peak week. And then it's just minor adjustments from there and you should be in good shape. Um, that is unfortunately not how this is playing out for me. And so if you find yourself in one of those like shit hits the fan kind of uh, scenarios, this is really going to give you a little bit of a template for the kind of things that you want to think about and how you want to approach things. Um, so what I'm dealing with here, travel, stress, sleep dysfunction, um, there's just going to have to be some additional tracking that I'm doing this week. And so I'll step you in um, through all that right now. So What's been going on throughout this prep so far? So I started this in January at around 22 weeks out. And from the point I was 22 weeks out up until five weeks out, so that's a 17 week period. That's pretty much a full prep in most cases. It was really boring. There wasn't much going on. It was just like, you know, hey, progress, good. As you can see here, um, I lost about 36 pounds during that stretch, which is about two pounds per week on average. Had two untracked meals the whole time. One of those was a birthday meal that was not really anything macro unfriendly anyway. Um, my macros have stayed pretty consistent. Protein and fats had not really changed throughout that. Protein was around 275. Fats were about 60. Pretty consistently. Um, fats might have started a little bit higher at 22 weeks out. I think they might have been closer up to, towards like 80, maybe 90. It was so long ago at this point, I barely remember. So they've dropped down. They've been at 60 for a long time now. Um, and then carbs range from, you know, 330 on a high day, 250-ish on a regular day, down to about 130 on a low day. That's where I'm at right now. So, um, and I, st I stopped high days just as a programmatic thing, um, just like automatically plugging them in at about seven weeks out. Um, up until then, I was doing um, high carbs on leg days. Around seven weeks out, I'm like, we're just going to do high carbs when we need it. And it ended up being about once every 10 days or so for a little while there. So um, that's been pretty much it. It was 17 weeks of pretty boring prep. Now, boring on paper. Um, it was certainly not boring in practice because this is my first time trying to coach myself through prep. And it's been a, a little bit of an ordeal, to be sure. It's been a challenge. It's hard just trying to look at yourself objectively and see yourself as somebody else would has been the biggest challenge of this. Like, I know what to do. I know what decisions to make. I know everything that I need to know about prepping myself. It's just being able to have that objective look and make those decisions about yourself is the really big challenge. And that's where I've really struggled. Um, but, you know, doing okay. Doing okay with it. I'm, I'm decently happy with how things were looking at five weeks out. 
And um, since then, it's been like two steps forward, two steps back, one step off to the side, another step forward, another step back. So trying to reclaim a little bit of that. So let's let's look at what was going on here. At five weeks out, this was a planned trip to Oregon, West Coast. So I'm in Tennessee. So this is a cross-country trip, uh, half a day in an airport, et cetera, on planes. Um, and that was for one week. And this was just because I needed to. It had been a long time since I'd seen family. My parents are out there. My brothers and their families are out there. I needed to go see everybody. I was long overdue. My diet for that was, I would say, about 95.5. I did use a meal prep service while I was out there, um, and uh, that really helped. The travel days were fine. I just had a couple of little bites off plan here and there, nothing big. Didn't even really have a full meal off. There was just a couple little extra things that happened on that trip. You know, you go home, you're with your family, mm, food's around, you just grab a few bites. It wasn't anything destructive. I felt like that was still a pretty productive trip. I, I did maintain a normal training schedule. My cardio dropped off a little bit. So I had been doing a high amount of cardio on this prep, but it's been very low intensity. So I do a 30 minute walk first thing in the morning. Uh, I do um, 30 to 40 minutes at the max post-workout. That's usually on an elliptical, sometimes on a bike, and then typically another 30 minute walk later in the day. Um, so it's you know about 90 to 100 minutes a day of cardio, but it's not like sweating my ass off kind of cardio. So it's really just accumulating steps, putting in work, um, not focusing on trying to kill myself with it, not trying to just make a big puddle of sweat or anything. I've only, I've, the size of my motor is only so big and I can't go that hard all the time. Uh, I find that, you know, I kind of wear myself out and kind of dig myself into a hole. I've done that on previous preps where I'm just pushing a lot of volume on my training and I'm trying to do a lot of cardio and it'll be higher intensity cardio and I just crash and burn. And if I make it 16 weeks, that's, that's been, that's been like, can I survive for 16 weeks? Well, here I made it 17 and I was still feeling good 17 weeks in. I didn't feel like I was over dieted. I didn't feel like I was overworked. I was tired to be sure, but I was surviving okay. It, it was fine. And I felt like, yeah, I got five more weeks of this in me, but then this happened. So travel, <laughs> the cardio did suffer a little bit just because I was really busy on that trip. Um, I elected to stay in a hotel on that trip rather than at my parents' place just because I wanted some space to kind of be separate from everybody, um, a place where I could work. It was still like a normal working trip where I was still doing client check-ins every day, maintaining that schedule, training, cardio, and then um, get up really early. So I was still waking up around 4.30, go for a 40-minute walk around Market Street in Salem, where my hotel was, walk around the homeless encampments there. Um, and uh, then I would come back, do a bunch of work, eat, run off to the gym, do my training, cardio, and try to get to my parents' place by like, you know, 10 a.m. or so, 10 or 11. At that point, though, it's like, you know, they don't get up super early, but at that point, they're ready to go. They're, they're kind of ready for me. And so I, I, there were a couple days where um, I definitely uh, shortchanged a few cardio minutes here and there. Um, and, and also the the intensity was off across the board on both training and cardio because I was so tired because I was just sleeping so poorly when I was there. Um, I'd never experienced such lousy sleep quality before, to be honest with you. It's one of those things that's always been my superpower where I can always sleep and be really well recovered the next day. Um, it took a big hit there and boy, my, my training intensity fell off a cliff on that trip. So at four weeks out then, come back home for a week, um, catch up on some sleep, get back into the groove. Um, I was able to tie up another two pounds or so that week. Didn't really lose anything when I was in Oregon. Just kind of, okay, cool. Kind of maintained for the most part. Um, some travel related stress might have been involved there as well. Just, you know, water retention from flying, etc. Just, you know, running through the airport, trying not to miss flights, that kind of stuff. I did have a little scare on the way back where I almost missed a flight due to a last minute gate change. Um, after coming back, I did do a, a, a very, uh, it was a very high day. Uh, it was high carb and high fat day. It was very deliberate. It was controlled. It was planned. It was just the targets were very high um, just because I was really drained and I wanted to see if just bringing in some extra food would help. And it did. It did. I also got registered for the show that week. Felt like, okay, cool. That happened. Now um, I wanted to give myself, because I felt like that, that trip, that first trip might have thrown me off a little bit. So I wanted to get back into the groove, give myself a few days. And I knew it would take probably three, maybe four days to really kind of get back to where I felt like I was myself again and back on track. 
So I did that and then I felt good about it. I'm like, all right, cool, let's register for the show. So we did that and I was feeling good at that point at about four weeks out. Now at three weeks out, um, I had to go back to Oregon. So there were some health issues with my family that were not an issue when I was there before. This just kind of came out of the blue. Um, and so I went back because I felt like my presence was kind of needed there. So this led to some incredibly high stress. Um, my sleep suffered again. Um, my training was on schedule, uh, but the quality was off a little bit. So um, I was able to get in all my cardio this time around, just so massively fatigued. I would say on that trip, my diet was probably closer to 7.30, 70.30, um, 70 on, 30 off. I did not use a meal prep service. I did go to the grocery store. I stayed with my parents um, at their place that time. Um, so I just used their kitchen, did some meal prep there. So I had all of the normal stuff, but I was just um, having a hard time saying no to other things. And so there was a binge one night that was supposed to be like a, a, a deliberate, just untracked meal, just again, to try and try and mitigate some stress. Um, and I know like you can't, you know, stress eating isn't a thing. I tell people this all the time, but also like all of your stress goes into the same, same place. And I just knew I was overloaded on cortisol. And so I tried to remove stress where I could. And so some of that stress is just uh, fatigue related stress from, from dieting. And so I'm like, well, let me just not diet for a night and let me just chill out. And it did have the intended effect. Like I did, I definitely felt better the next day, although man, I really overdid it and it was out of control. And it's funny because, um, what was it? Two episodes ago, I think, uh, the topic was how I controlled and, and overcame my binge eating. Apparently that's still a work in progress. <laughs> But um, I contribute this to a couple of issues. And so I've done a postmortem on this and gone back and thought about it. Uh, and what it comes down to is you can probably tell if you've been listening um, to this or watching these videos for a while, you can probably tell I'm congested. Um, I've been congested now for about four-ish weeks, sore throat coming and going. So I've just been kind of like low-grade sick. I think I had some kind of a virus thing a while back. And just because of this accumulation of stress, it's just my body is not clearing it. And so it's just holding on to it and hanging on to it. Um, and so that combined with sleep issues, combined with stress, um, I equate it to, you know, kind of impairing your decision-making much like if you were drunk realistically. Um, like at that point, it's like, yeah, whatever, fuck it. I'm just going to eat all the shit. That's fine. And so I've been there before. It's been a while though. It's been a while, but I totally get that. I've had clients who report that as well. There's just times when, you know, your decision-making gets impaired just because of multiple factors and it happens and it can happen to the best of us. I don't think I'm the best of us, but I do feel like I have a good handle on this most of the time. I just lost my handle on it. That's all there is to it. So um, that being said, it was still productive in some way. I mean, it was it was more than it needed to be, although it did only go up a pound the following day, which is pretty good. Um, but it was it was in excess of 4,000 calories, probably, I mean, if, I, if I had to guess, for that one meal. So it was, uh, it was a little nuts. It was a little nuts. Um, I definitely feel like I got that out of my system, though. <laughs> and so um, I was in Oregon for a whole week there actually went out on a one-way ticket. I didn't know when I was coming back. I wasn't sure if I was going to do the show. I figured I might be out there for a month. It was it was TBD. And then I, I realized like, okay, I can come back home. I will need to go back out there in June after the show um, just to follow up on some more things. And it's going to be an ongoing thing for a little bit. But um, it's... Uh, it, it's... <sighs> At that time, it was very unknown. wasn't sure what was going on. So uh, now there's a little bit more of a handle on it. We have a better idea of what's going on. But still, it's like, okay, well, now we come back here, and it's, uh, we're just a little over two weeks out. When I got back, it was about 16 days, I think. Yeah, I came back on Thursday prior to being two weeks out. So it would have been 16 days out. And then I was like, okay, we got to pick up the pieces here. So what do we do? So now as of when I'm recording this, I'm recording this at 10 days out. Um, this episode will go online when I'm eight days out. So um, two weeks out now, I'm back home. My sleep has continued to suffer. My stress has continued to remain very, very elevated just because of all the stuff that went on that necessitated that previous trip. Fatigue is super high. Uh, a lot of this is because I'm not sleeping well. I'm kind of like sleepwalking and zombifying my way through the day. Digestion is off. Um, there's constipation. I've got GI reflux going on. Um, all this comes down to really stress being the main thing. Thing that, that is contributing to all this. So that's what my focus is on, is trying to manage that. So we've got a week from this point. I mean, right now it's less than that, but until peak week. So how do we, uh, how do we turn this ship 
back in the channel so it's pointing in the right direction. That That's what the goal of this week right now is for me. So to that end, here's what I'm doing. I'm ramping up my tracking efforts across the board on everything. So I have a spreadsheet, um, and for the sake of all the audio-only listeners out there, I will just verbalize this. Um, if I'm really really on it with my uh, post-production skills for YouTube. I'll flash this thing up on screen so you can see it. Um, It's just a spreadsheet I put together that has um, the time of every meal, what the macros are for that meal. Um, And then I'm weighing myself after every meal and noting that time as well. And then I have a space where I can put in activity, how I'm feeling, et cetera, between meals. And using that as a way to kind of guide like, okay, this is when I feel more tight. This is when I feel less tight and really troubleshoot like, hmm, there's some things here that aren't feeling good and it's consistently at the same time each day. So let's fix that. And it just kind of helps me to visualize it and put it on paper. Um, You can also see like how much your weight's dropping. And this also gives me a good sense um, prior to peak week to get an idea for what kind of a groove my body's in as far as expecting, you know, what I'm probably going to weigh on stage. I'm going to be under the cap at this point. That's not really a concern. Um, But now it's about thinking ahead and thinking about what's the weight where I look the best. And so far, I have not arrived at that number yet because I still have these issues that I'm trying to sort out. But as I sort these out, once everything kind of normalizes, and it will, um, then I'll have a better idea like, hey, you know what? Right around 206 is kind of the sweet spot. If I can hit 206 at around 11 o'clock in the morning, that's when I look and feel the best. That's what I'm going to be aiming for. And then peak week is going to be about trying to manipulate some variables so that I land there at the right time. So um, so that tracking is all happening here. And then I'm getting in extra naps to make up for the poor sleep at night, um, kind of just monitoring my activity level during each um, period in between meals, um, anything uh, outside the norm with fluids, like I've been having a bunch of teas this week to try and do things, um, do specific things. So um, noting like just level of stomach distension, if there's some systemic bloat that feels like that's happening as well. And then I'm making those changes um, as needed to kind of optimize just how things feel um, based on everything, all the subjective stuff that I'm collecting there. So here's what I've changed so far. I use an uh, LMNT electrolyte solution. That's intra-workout. I've been using that for some time. What I noticed is that for some reason now that has started to cause some significant abdominal distension. So it took a a few days to figure out what it was, but I noticed like I had my my pre-workout meal I felt okay, and then I had my uh, pre-workout drink on the way to the gym, felt okay, and then as I'm warming up, I start drinking some water, and you don't really notice this at the time, but then 15 minutes into your workout, you're like, God, my stomach is so jacked up right now. And you, I put everything in the spreadsheet. I'm like, well, you know, yeah, GI was really upset. Stomach was super distended and bloated during training. Um, I'm like, huh, well, I felt okay after the meal. What else was, oh, what if it's that electrolyte thing? So the next day I swapped out the first meal. So it's typically oats is the carb source. I changed it out for cream of rice, just kind of preemptively, like let's just see if that makes a difference. And I removed the electrolyte packet and felt much tighter throughout that training session. Great, okay, so today I switched back to oats, actually increased the portion size a little bit, see if I can get an extra gram or two of fiber in there, still felt great. So problem identified, it's that electrolyte packet, which has been fine for months. I've been using that without issue. Now, however, problem. So we pull that out, cool. Um, I would like to have it in just because with some elevated sodium levels mid-workout, everything just contracts better. You know, sodium is your friend in the gym. So not having it in there, I feel like I miss a little something, but I'd rather feel good. Um, I mentioned I swapped oats of cre- with cream of rice for one day to experiment. Didn't really cause any change. It was nice to have a little change of pace. That was good, but uh, didn't really have any impact on the GI. I prefer oats, so I'll probably just stick with that. Um, So last night, as I'm recording this on Wednesday, Tuesday night, I added in an additional 25 grams of carbs um, just because I was kind of tracking my weight throughout the day. And I was coming in, um, even though um, the previous day was, was that a rest day? Might have been. Having a tough time remembering at this point. Um, But I was tracking like my weight was much, much tighter throughout the day. So I'm like, I think I can get away with some extra carbs. And I'm wondering if having those extra carbs will help me sleep a little better. And lo and behold, it did. I got up one time. I think it was about 45 minutes after I laid down. I got up once and then I slept through the night after that. First time I've had that happen in about 
two and a half weeks. <laughs> so that was a boon. Uh, that was fantastic. I need that to continue happening. So um, I'm going to do that again tonight, but I'm going to play around with a different carb source. So I'm not really big on using potatoes on a regular basis just because they're kind of a pain to prep in a way that I like them. Uh, but they're a good peak week staple. And so I want to experiment with them tonight here at 10 days out see if my stomach responds okay to them. And if so, then I know I've got the clear, the all clear to use those during peak week. You can certainly overdo it. And I know if I do overdo it, my GI, it, it, play, it gets very gassy and just kind of plays havoc on things. But uh, I haven't used potatoes in a while. I want to bring them in now, just a small portion as a trial run, see how that works. So I'm going to introduce those tonight. Um, I've been scaling down my training volume. Like yesterday was a leg day. I did three exercises. Um, I did uh, four sets of leg extensions. I did three, four sets of leg press and three sets of a deduction. That was it. Um, that was enough. I didn't, I was, again, this was before I had slept well. Um, so I was kind of just like zombifying once again, my way through my training session. There's no point in trying to push yourself to do 20 sets when you barely have 10 sets in you, right? Like to some extent you can mind over matter that shit. I could not mind over matter that yesterday. I was barely moving. And so, um, you, you kind of take the L and you're like, well, let me put in less volume, but let me focus on just trying to make sure that the quality of the sets overall is a little bit better so that I can still, you know, get some reasonable work done. But just, you know, at this point, like my recovery is slow, so I don't need as much volume. And as fatigue goes higher, as stress gets higher, adding more stress, physical stress from higher volume, high intensity training, it's only productive to a certain point. And so I just kind of did the bare minimum yesterday. Today, having slept better last night, I went in for a back workout, much better, more reasonable volume across the board. Did about 15 working sets for back, did six working sets for biceps, called it good. So it felt that felt good, that felt productive. I didn't feel like it was too much. So um, I also added a laxative yesterday and I'll be taking that daily just to try and keep things moving just because it's it's not as stagnant as it has been, but it's not quite as, as what's the word, mobile as I might like. So definitely still a little, little on the sluggish side there. So um, th this is um, helping, definitely. Like I feel so much better today, Wednesday, as of recording this than I did on Monday. Um, well, I feel better than I did on Tuesday and Tuesday, I didn't really feel that much better from Monday, actually. Both of those days kind of sucked. Uh, just dragging ass completely, like barely keeping your eyes open, taking multiple long naps every day. So it's amazing what some high quality sleep will do for you as far as getting the ship back on track. So the other thing here is, you know, stress management. This is the big thing for me. So pretty much everything here just revolves around living in a higher stress environment. And for me, like my life is usually pretty low stress. It's pretty chill, not a lot going on, not a lot of variables, not a lot of noise in life. And so this has been a little bit of an interruption to that end. And so it, it's thrown me for quite a loop. <laughs> and so it's just been about trying to adjust to that. So there's got to be some meditation, some breathing, relaxing. I spent some time yesterday just sitting outside, um, you know, stop and smell the roses, you know, just enjoy the sun. You know, as I go and take the dogs for a walk, the sunshine and it's blue skies, just take a minute to like notice that and just let yourself unwind a little bit. Um, I can also tell you like, Everything that's going on with my family, like I still haven't really had a chance to process all of it yet. I'll spare you all the details, but um, there's going to be some changes happening soon. And like I can tell you right now, like th there's a breakdown on my end coming soon. I'm just not sure when it's going to be, but I think that ultimately is probably going to be the solution. Like there's going to be an ugly cry session that happens here sometime. I'm hoping it doesn't happen during this episode as I'm recording this, um, but <laughs> it's going to happen. And that I think is probably going to be the solution, but I just can't force it. It's got to happen organically. I can't force it. So whenever it happens, whenever it comes out is when it's going to come out. It almost happened, you know, in the middle of my cardio session yesterday. Um, but I held it back. That's the thing. It's like, it, it's kind of like, you know, you, you know, you have to throw up and you know, you'll feel better once you do, but you can't keep yourself from trying not to throw up. 
it's the same kind of thing. <laughs> like, I know this breakdown is coming, but I'm like fighting it off with everything I've got. Um, even though this will be the solution, like that's what's going to allow this stress to finally come up and come out. So it's going to happen soon. I'm just hoping it happens before the show. Um, and so that's why I'm trying to create a little space mentally um, where I can kind of allow that to happen. And that's that's what needs to happen realistically. So um my goal by the end of this week, so and I'm, I'm counting that as like Sunday, and we'll start peak week on Monday here. I want my sleep patterns back to normal um, consistently, not just once, but consistently. Um, and so I have um, started taking an ashwagandha supplement just as some kind of like cortisol management. It doesn't really do much. It doesn't hurt anything. So I figure why not? I have been taking a sleep um, supplement that includes some zinc and magnesium. Don't find that that's doing much as well. I have tried CBD. I have tried um, hydroxyzine. Um, I've tried, <laughs> tried just about everything. Benadryl. None of it really seems to make too much of a difference. Um, none of it really got, gives me like that. Ah, there we go. That's the ticket. It. That's what I needed. So again, stress management, just like brain work, getting your head right is going to be the key here. Um, get the bowels and the GI back to normal, which is just going to help me feel tighter. Um, and if I can, if I can feel like go through a typical day and get a typical day's worth of food and feel like I can keep my midsection in control the whole time, that's going to be the key. And that's how I know I'm going to be back on track. Um, because right now, like when I add in some extra food, like after I eat, I can definitely feel it. And the thing is like, you know, peak week and show day, I need to be able to bring in some carbs and still keep that tight feeling. So it's just about taking everything from the baseline here. Where are we at here? There we go. Um, this is where stress is. And if I can just incrementally, you know, a couple times a day, just take it one step down. You know, it's not going to be all the way down here. It's not going to be at the floor. But if I can get it to like a midpoint so that it's only up to like chest level and not over my head, that'll be good enough. That'll be good enough to get it done. And then, of course, I want to maintain training intensity this week as well. Volume can scale back. Your volume can come down a little bit. Your intensity shouldn't um, up until, you know, once we get into peak week and then leaving some more reps in the tank is clearly going to be an okay decision. So, Next week will be peak week, so I'm going to record that, like I said, a little bit later in the week, just so that we've got a little bit more data that we can talk about here, and I can give you a little bit more of a rundown on exactly what has happened to date at that point. So that's all I've got for this week, so kind of short and sweet here, um, but I just wanted to bring you up to speed on what I've been dealing with and take some of these points and stick them in your back pocket if you find yourself at the tail end of either a, a prep for a show or just a cut in general and you're just trying to land the plane but man there's some wind blowing all over the place and your little two prop plane is just getting blown all over the place you can't even see the runway because it's too foggy and stormy outside like how do you land this effing plane this is how I'm doing it um, and so I feel like I've made some good strides this week in just a couple of days so I'm going to continue this um, robust tracking and um, just continue to play off of the data that I get from that and just continue to eliminate things or change things here and there if it's something that it seems like it's going to move some of these markers in the right direction. Like, oh, yeah, okay, I definitely need more of a nap here. All right, cool, do that. Uh, this food, I'm not feeling good after this meal. Let's change that. Like this fourth meal here, I'm considering swapping that for something because I do feel very full and distended. It's, you know, a huge portion of chicken and veg, um, which is fine, but it's like at the same time, it's like, yeah, it's a classic staple bodybuilding food, but if it doesn't feel good in my stomach, Let's replace it with something else. So that might find its way to get getting replaced by a shake or something like that, just to keep it on the simple side. So that's where I'm at for this week. So I appreciate you all watching. Tune in next week. We will go over peak week. And then the week after that, we'll do a breakdown of the show and we'll, we'll look at the good, the bad, and the ugly. And hopefully I'm one of those and not all three. Okay, that wraps up another episode, and thank you all so much for watching. If you like this episode, please share it on social media and tag me on Instagram. I am at Darren underscore star. Also, please subscribe to the channel here if you haven't already, and feel free to check out any of those other videos that you see here as well. 5starphysique.com has details on everything that I have to offer, including contest prep coaching, body transformation coaching, workout programs, swag, and a whole lot more. Thanks again for listening, and I will catch you all back here next week.